Hey everyone, it's Benno Papari from Songwriters on Process, and today I'm very excited to bring to you my interview with Mary Gaucher. Um, this is about 35 minutes long, but you can't miss a second of it. It's just filled with bits of wisdom uh, for just really any type of writer. I mean, Mary is a songwriter. Well, she's also, as you'll see, she's written short stories. She has a memoir coming out uh, next year. But uh, there's just 35 minutes. This is 35 minutes solid of just bits of wisdom and bits of advice for any type of writer. I just, I found myself learning so much about myself as a writer and about things I can take away as a writer listening to her talk. Um, so just a recap, a sh small recap of, of everything that she's done. Uh, her 2018 album, Rifles and Rosary Beads, was nominated for a Grammy for Best Folk Album. Uh, each song on there was co-written with a U.S. military veteran to tell the stories of our military veterans. Uh, it was also nominated for Album of the Year at the Americana Music Awards and just received many, many accolades. Um, as I said, she's written short stories. Um, she has a memoir coming out next year about her life. She did not write her first song until she was 35 years old. Uh, she started out as a restaurateur. She owned a very successful restaurant in Boston, sold it to finance her second album. Um, she has written for many TV shows. Uh, she's just a, really one of the best songwriters out there, in my opinion. It seems like whenever she puts out an album or anything, it always appears on year-end uh, best of lists uh, for a variety of newspapers, magazines, and music publications. No matter what she does, it's always on one of those lists. One of the things Mary says, I think, that's an important takeaway for any writer, and the first question I asked her was, does she write every day? And she flipped it around and she says, no, but she reads every day. And she thinks that reading is a probably far more important aspect to the writing process than writing. Uh, and I tell writers this all the time, if you don't read, you will not improve. There's no shortcuts and it's that simple. So we talked a lot about that, but I'm, I'm so glad she said that because I've always believed that, that if you don't read, you're not gonna be a great writer. But she says, you know, if you're writing, writing is important, but you have to read every day. And so be sure if you are a writer, follow that advice. So make sure you watch every bit of this, this is great. Uh, as always, my website, Songwriters on Process, features interviews with songwriters all about their creative process. So check that out, and thanks for watching. The big question I always like to start with is how much writing outside of songwriting do you like to do? And do you think that's important to do those things as a songwriter? And I know you write books, so I guess I step. We'll talk about that, but I guess separately, how much daily writing do you do, and is that important as far as the songwriting process? Well, um, you know, I think I would flip it and say I think reading is really important uh, for songwriters, um, particularly this songwriter. I. Yeah. I'm surrounded by books. I've literally got thousands of books everywhere you look and there's just, I'm becoming almost a hoarder. I believe in buying books, consuming books, marking up books, owning books. I want my books to look like my guitar. I want them to look well read. And I think consuming uh, words and stories is very helpful. Um, I only wrote a book in all honesty uh, because uh, I was offered a chance to do so by a publisher. I wouldn't have written it and pitched it to a publisher. I'm not that disciplined. <laughs> Writing a book is wildly, unbelievably difficult. Yeah. Um, I just got off the phone with Emily Harris this morning, and she's in her 10th year of writing her memoir. <laughs> you Yikes. know, it, it took Rodney seven or eight years. It took me seven years to write. I mean, the book's... Uh, I, I look at authors as the real rock stars just because the level of difficulty in writing a good book. Um, I don't write a lot um, outside uh, of uh, songwriting and the book I was, uh, I was uh, working on for the, uh, for the publisher. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, if it does well, I'll be inspired to do it again. Um, I am in love with language. Uh, but I'm very concise. I, I'm a songwriter, so I tend to 
It's very hard to write a paragraph for me. I tend to write a good sentence and feel like I'm done. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a songwriter. I, I, I write um, uh, short form much better than long yeah. form. Yeah. So I was, the, my last question is typically about reading, but let's dig into it right now. Um, I do find that songwriters are voracious readers. Uh, for the most part, they read, I think, much more than the general public. I do find that the same writers tend to come up a lot. So tell me who you like to read. I guess, do you have all time favorites? Who are you reading now? Let's dig into that. Let's see. Um... I've been invited to do a show on NPR that pairs a songwriter with an author. I think it's called Songwriter, and it's pushed out through um, Acoustic Cafe nationally on NPR. And I chose Odie Lindsay, uh, an author that uh, is also a teacher at Vanderbilt here in Nashville. Uh, he's also a veteran, um, and uh, I think he writes uh, women... Uh, as well as Wally Lamb, which who is one of my friends and one of my favorite authors, uh, it's very it's very beautiful the way he writes female veterans, and so um, uh, he's got a new book out that just came out late July uh, from the viewpoint of a female veteran, um, and so I'm reading I'm, I've just got that book in the mail to to um, to read so it's on my desk now. Uh, and uh, I'll get through that quickly and start working on a song for this show that we're going to do. Um, I've been uh, reading, I've just got so much backlog. <laughs> Sue Monk Kids got two books I haven't read. I, I haven't read the Donna Tartt book that I, I bought, what, seven years, six years ago? I've got mountains of books, and I've got major catching up to do on and it's impossible to pick a favorite. I'm all over the place. I love both fiction and nonfiction. I love travel logs. I'm reading yeah. a book as well by a writer whose name escapes me, uh, who did the Camino uh, pilgrimage in Spain. Um, and his travel log is so interesting to me. Uh, being stranded, well, not stranded, but I feel kind of stranded. I've never been home this long in my entire career. Our last yeah. show was March 14th. Oh, wow. Uh, so there's everything's canceled. We don't even yeah. know. I'm thinking of Kurt Vonnegut just talking about authors, Slaughterhouse-Five. Like, we're going to come out from the bomb shelter and see what's left. Could be one of my all-time favorite books. Billy it's Pilgrim. One of the books uh, that, Vonnegut, that... he grabbed me when I yeah. was in college my first year. And, you know, I've read... Um, uh, everything he's written, and certainly I've read books about his life. Here's a little known fact. Did you know he was John Irving's English teacher? I did not I did not know that. That's a good fact. I, see, I love facts like that. Um, you know, I remember reading Slaughterhouse-Five, and I remember reading, I got to a certain point when I finally realized it was okay to laugh at some of the writing in there. Right? At first I felt, this is funny, but I'm not sure if I should be laughing at this. And I realized it's probably okay to be laughing. And I realized he could do humor as well as he could do, you know, the powerfully poignant. And that's, I mean, besides his language and his command of the language, that's very hard to do as an author to do both of those things. Um, he comes up all the time. So here are the authors that come up. Vonnegut comes up a lot. Oh yeah. Uh, Cormac McCarthy. Oh yeah. Bukowski. Um, those are probably the big three that I think if you were to ask me like, who are the ones, uh, uh, Raymond Ch uh, uh, Chandler comes up a lot, but why, I guess for those songwriters out there who don't read or don't read as much, why do you think it is important to read? I mean, someone's gonna say, but I don't, I don't write novels. So why, how can reading make me a better songwriter? What would you say to that? Well, in my view, songs are little stories. Um, and you've got to master the art of storytelling. And how, how better to do it than read the master storytellers? Um, I think uh, uh, also we're, we're working with uh, melody paired with language. And so we've got to have an understanding of 25 ways to say the same thing and then pick the best way to say it. I think that um, when I read great writing, it makes me a better 
writer. Sure. Yeah, of course. Do you, do you find, yeah, I was going to say, I guess, do you find, do you find that, so what influence when you read those novels, what influence do they have directly on your songwriters? Is it more just the concision of the language? Cause that's so important as a songwriter. Could be, it could be description. It could be, um, uh, you know, I've got a sign here that I have been staring at for years. I'll show you. <laughs> right, right. Excellent. I like it. <laughs> a song full of adjectives sucks. <laughs> right? So yeah. You need, to, you need to have a little movie. There has to be motion and movement, not description. Yeah. Uh, too much description and I'm lost. And, and, and I don't really uh, listen to a lot of um, pop music. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some great stuff out there, but it's not, it's not on my dial. And and I'm listening to song, serious songwriters, uh, and they do that. They capture what, what I think of as a little movie. In three and a half, four and a half minutes, they can do what it takes 600 pages for a novelist to do. Yeah. That's my goal. It's aspirational. I don't always get there, but I've gotten there a couple times, and when I do, it is cause for celebration. Uh, you mentioned I saw poetry on that, on that thing you showed me. Do you read a lot of poetry? I wish I read more poetry. Um, I, in my pile, have a lot of poetry books uh, uh, that I have to catch up on. Um, I do consume some, but n not nearly enough. That does surprise me. I say that uh, few songwriters read poetry. Uh, and that does surprise me because I feel like what better economy of language is there uh, with, with poems? That always, I'm always surprised by that answer. And uh, most of us probably feel as though we should be reading more, you know. Yeah. We should uh, certainly be reading at least our poet laureate, our 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 state poet laureate. Our city has a poet laureate. I mean, we've uh, got we've got uh, you know we've got so much uh, uh, to pull from, and and I don't know why I don't read more poetry. I I, uh, I guess it's just time. There's just because I'm self-managed, because I'm running my own social media, because I'm dealing with the business part as well as the creative part of my career, and because I read so much long form, uh, uh, it's like time, you know? But uh, I know that that's lacking. I need, to, I need to, to, to immerse myself more because it always inspires me. Do you, do you do any journal writing? Uh, no. Not anymore. I used to. Um, and I return to that form when I'm in a lot of pain. I certainly wrote in my journal when, when, uh, after the election yeah. in 2016. I mean, I look at it now and there was a part of me that knew uh, we'd end up here. Yeah. I mean, the reason most of us who cried were crying wasn't because we lost the election. It was because we lost something far, far bigger. And the grief, when I'm in grief, I'll journal. You when will. I'm, when I'm in big emotion, I'll journal. But when I'm kind of cruising along, no. It's, you, it's, I turn to the page when I'm hurting. You do, yeah. And do you, you, do you sometimes go back to those journals for song ideas? I do. And for validation that my gut works. Ah, when do you go back? Do you go back a week or two, or do how? When do you go? When do you return to those? Um, usually, not often. But if I'm thinking something too much, and I need to change from thinking to feeling, I have to convince myself that my brain isn't as important as my solar plexus. Hmm. It, it's a toggle. As an artist. You know, I, I, I use my intellect a lot, but I know that the power of what I do doesn't come from here. It's definitely a deeper knowing. And sometimes I have to go back in and remember that the deeper knowing is with me and it works really well and I don't need to overthink things. With the overthinking, do you, do you I, lyrically, do you do a lot of revising or do you- So see, much, I wear myself out. Oh, do, okay. Yeah. Let's talk about that. I mean, what, I mean, the way you say that makes it sound like you didn't wish you do as you did as much. I mean, it's your tone, yeah. at least what I heard, but look, even your face, right? Yeah. 
I mean, yeah. Yeah. what kind of, revi- I, lyrically, I guess, what kind of revising are you typically doing? Oh, man. You know, I go over it and 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 over it. And, um, um, you know, as I've gotten older, uh, most of the time I know when to let it go. But there's still so I've been working on a song now for two years, and I just don't have it yet. You know, it, it, it ain't there yet, and it's a matter of not giving up. It's not like I want to abandon it because I know it's a good song in there, but I haven't found it yet. But um, editing is something that I can edit myself right out of an idea. If I overthink it too much, I'll ruin it. And I don't know oftentimes... Um, uh, the the, ba- the the gut head balance is is a challenge for me, uh, and uh, I think the ego is attached to the intellect, and uh, I think the gut is more childlike, and uh, my uh, my favorite artists like Lucinda and Neil Young and and those folks they just they go with their gut, and they don't let the ego overtake. Um, and, and I like that. I like that a lot. And they're willing to put out songs that aren't the best songs they've ever written. You know, they, they put out songs because they're songwriters. And they release them and they don't have to uh, make a statement every time they put a song. You know, the, the challenge is to, to catch and release, I think. And, and the overthinking really slows down the process and I'm guilty of it a lot. What tells you when you're overthinking? What what feeling do you get when you know when you stop yourself and you think I'm overthinking this? Is well, what point do you get to? I mean, I can when I'm banging my head against the desk, literally <laughs> uh, in frustration. Uh, I know that I've taken it too far. I got to walk. You know, I, I learned a while back to walk, writer's walk, and um, just get to the park, hit the five miles. I'll probably get there this afternoon if the thunderstorms clear out in time before I can, um, if I can get there after the, there's thunderstorms coming in Nashville, if it, if it's cleared out, if I can get to the park by five before sunset, I'll get out there and walk for two hours and just walk it off. And then I can come back with a, um, a certain exhaustion that, that, that is more uh, productive exhaustion than sitting here. Uh, with, uh, you know, uh, a rhyming dictionary, a thesaurus, um, frustration, um, and, and, and aggravation and impatience. All that stuff is not good. So uh, it's a physical thing sometimes to get to wear myself down. It's an ordeal. Yourself. Songwriting is an ordeal. It's, yeah. for me, it's not, and sometimes it's just not pleasant, you know. It's just hard. It's work. And yet, my God, when you get one and you know it's a good one, um, it's worth all the struggle to get there. Yeah, let's talk about that. Is that something you use to work things through? Is it a daily thing? How does that help your process? Well, it's a daily thing, but um, I also know that if I'm working on a song and I'm trying to work it out, um, to having the rhythm of my feet. Oh yeah. It 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 does something, and and it, it works. It's <clears throat> on itself in my subconscious as I'm walking. So the actual so, rhythm, the pitter yeah. patter. And yeah. sometimes the answer just bloop, it comes right up, and I'm like, there it is. Walking wins again. Um, and and I think it gets my mind, my conscious mind off of it, but my subconscious is still working it, and my conscious mind can hear the melody. So I'm in the melody, but I'm trying to not say the words, and the words are probably going around anyway somewhere subconsciously. And every now and then it just pops right out of my mouth, and, and it, it's similar to when I'm playing the song, you know, 40 times, and then blah, blah and then blah, it just comes, it appears <laughs> right. like lightning in a storm, there it is. And I, I don't know how that works, and it's one of the great joys of being a songwriter to to know that it does work and it's it's mystical and it's probably also biological in some way there's br- the brain is doing something um and i don't have a great uh a way of describing it but it's processing it's processing well i've heard i mean i one songwriter told me that he wrote all of his uh the, the band is called murder by death and the songwriter's name is adam turla and they do this kind of a uh, 
it's kind of an Americana, it's hard to describe mu music, but he told me that he wrote one of the albums, uh, all the songs hiking. And he found that the hiking, that the songs when he listened to them matched the cadence of the hike he was on that day. Uh, and I just talked to a songwriter last week who told me gardening does it for him. Something about the movement. And I think, you know, whether it's the sounds that you hear, the repetition. So I hear that all the time. Um, but what about, and I, I, I think eight or nine years ago, I interviewed Chris Difford from Squeeze and he told me about trains and planes and being in the backs of cars. So it's not anything you're doing, but just movement in general. So do you find that happens too as well with you? Maybe oh, not yeah. when you're doing something, but maybe when in your vehicle. Yeah, it's working on itself. Yeah. When I'm not working on it. Guy Clark used to build guitars. And he didn't build guitars because he wanted guitars. He built guitars because that was part of his songwriting process. Yeah. The song was working itself while he was shaving on the neck and working the woodwork. Well, when I was... a Professor, I told my students, and I, this is the best advice I could probably give any writer, regardless of what they write, is it's a mistake to think that the writing process is only happening when pen goes to paper. Your writing process is happening when you are sleeping, eating, walking, working out, doing nothing. But, but people get frustrated when they think about, oh, it's not, you know, the writing's not coming to me. But what they don't realize, that writing process is always happening. And I think that's, I feel like that's what we're talking about a little bit. But if people expand. Yeah, Nick Cave just wrote an essay on that. On, oh, he did. I'm on, I'm on his list. He writes beautifully. Um, and he just wrote an essay on that, that if you're frustrated and you feel like it's not coming, you need to know that it is coming. Yeah. It's just not coming in your time. That's it's true. It's working on itself. It's working on itself. Yeah. yeah. The question I also have is, I've done a lot of these Zoom interviews with songwriters, so obviously aren't touring. Um, do, you, do you find that having large expanses of time, because um, I think that can do it one of two ways. People can get more disciplined or less disciplined. If you have those large, if you're not traveling, you're not doing, you know, the, the touring. Do you find that being at home more makes it, make it makes you more disciplined because you do have all this time to do stuff or because you have that time you know you realize maybe you can do things later if that makes sense i guess does it does that does it make you more or less disciplined right now i do better on deadlines you do yeah i write a lot of songs in hotel rooms i got, I got two days off you know so i'm gonna work on this thing um this wide open question mark that we're all submerged in it's not the best thing for me. Um, you know, I turned the book in because I had a deadline. Yeah. Um, I put myself on deadlines when I'm working on a particular record. Like, I want to have this song cycle written, and I want to, I have to, actually, with the team. I, the, I need the record company, the publicist, they all need to know when I'm going in the studio. I got to be on the schedule or somebody else gets my slot. Ah, uh, right. So deadlines help me a lot. They do. Um, and I find them the same way that, and I'll create a false deadline for myself. Like yeah, a false deadline isn't, oh, start the stopwatch, write for an hour. It's, I have a phone call in an hour. I'll write for an hour. Um, you know, I have a meeting, I have a meeting in two hours and I'll, I'll use that as my deadline because I know it's a hard stop. And when I travel, because I travel a lot for work, if I take the train from DC to New York, I will always get more done in those two and a half hours than I did if I sat here for two and a half hours. Because yeah, I've got to put my yeah. laptop away when the train arrives. So, yeah, yeah. Um, tricking ourselves into deadlines. That's hard to do right now when it's just so surreal. Sure. Um, so let's talk a little about that ritual. This is what fascinates me. Uh, the ritual, Do how important is environment to you? And let's talk big picture environment, time of day, a place, uh, things like that. Um, I find for me having a ritual gives me confidence because I feel like if I'm in that right space, I'm more likely to get work done, even though that may not be true. But how important is ritual to your process? Um, I have had to train myself because I've been doing over 125 or so dates every year for the last 20 years, yeah. except for this year. Um, I've had to train myself to do this in hotel rooms. And um, I miss that, like, a lot. And, you know, John Prine, 
wrote his last record in a hotel room and his wife put him in the hotel room in Nashville. Um, and he, they put him in the hotel next to the Country Music Hall of Fame so when he got sick of staring at the page, he could walk on over and walk around the Hall of Fame and visit the lyric sheets and, and the, the history of country music. Um, uh, for me, uh, you know, if, if I'm not getting anywhere with songs right now, I, I'm real tempted to... My, my partner Jamie said, you know, we could get a hotel room. Like, we're missing... That's part of my ritual. Sitting here at my desk at home is not how I write songs. Really? Anymore. Huh. Because of the travel life that I've lived, I, you know, I'll sit, I'll sit at a hotel room desk for 12 hours and really order coffee, um, get room service and love that. Sitting here at home is kind of, it's not my deal. And, and I don't know how to make it my deal. I guess I'm going to have to. I mean, I've written three songs since the shutdown in March or whenever the rest, April. Um, I did finish the book, however, and I was at it every day. But I, yeah, I'm going to have to impose deadlines on myself or just go get a hotel room. Or set your office up like a hotel room. Get I, the guess, I mean, Maya Angelou wrote in a hotel room. She'd bring her legal pad and have a hotel room set up to her specifications, and she'd go write in a hotel room. I think that's a thing. Some of us just, that is the ritual. I wonder if it's the, the few, fewer distractions. Um, but yeah. I, to me, it's confidence. I mean, it, it's if you know that that's where you get the work done, it's a, it's comfortable, Yep. right? Comfort um, does time of day matter? Morning, evening, afternoon, how important is that to you? If a song is coming, it could be the middle of the night. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, when I'm writing on books, I'm best from like eight till noon or one. And then my brain is right. done. But with songs, you know, I can, I've written them, you know, I've, I've moved it forward at three in the morning. It's just staying with it. You know, it's like having a fish got to keep reeling and time, right. time actually disappears. And it's a, it, it, it's not something that I'm, overthinking and it's coming and uh, time disappears. Yeah. Yeah. Um, pen and paper or computer? Computer. What do you use? Computer. Really? Not pen and paper. You're not, you're not old school. Not I'm old paper. school. No. Wow. Not even, you just said that without hesitation. Mm -mm. No, I love cut and paste. And, and I got a com uh, typewriter. Somebody sent me a typewriter, a gorgeous typewriter, 1946. Beautiful. And, and I'm, the keys are like, oh, my God, my hands aren't even strong enough to, like, this is work. <laughs> um, I'm used to this system now, and it works for me. Yeah, I, I was, that was going to be, because I could probably do a blog dedicated just to the pens that songwriters, I've never heard such brand allegiance to, except for, like, musical instruments and pens, that they love the certain type of ink, the certain type of pen, and oh, nothing yeah. else matters. Oh yeah, um, that's the only pen they can write with. I know. Yeah. Um, so you, I want to go back. You talked about that song that's been working on for a couple of years. How will you know? Because I think you said it. You think your exact words were, it, I, "I don't have it" or "It doesn't have it." How do you know when it? How will you know when you have it? How you will? How do you know when a song is done? Well, my answer used to be when I'm willing to play it in front of Guy Clark, but Guy is gone now. So um, I think I. I have to love it. I have to believe in it and love it and be proud of it and feel like um, there's not a word in it that I couldn't look an audience in an eye and in the eye and sing. Do you if start I have with doubt? I, I'm not. I'm not there yet. I need to mm. not have doubt. Yeah, doubt with what? The way just the words aren't aren't true or what? Yes, that the words don't feel true to me. Mm -hmm. Or that they feel like I'm clever. I can't stand clever. What I want to be that? honest, not clever. Clever meaning like, like, like kind of play on words or what do you mean by clever? You don't like clever. Um, it sounds good, but it doesn't mean anything. Okay. Okay. Um, do you typically start with words or what, do you have a start to the process or is it just kind of 
No, whatever, whatever happens first. You know, I try to start with a title because that gives me something to aim for. I learned yeah. in Nashville, a lot of folks around here start with a title and that's a great place to start because now I know what the bullseye is. But oftentimes the title becomes a line and I need a new title. <laughs> but it gives me a starting spot. And, and if I had to pick a place that I start from most frequently, it would be a title. You know, I don't hear that very often. I hear, I've only heard it a handful of times, but why do you think that that's, what does that do? How does that make for an easier start to it the puts process? puts a rudder on the boat. I'm not in the ocean going in circles trying to figure out what this fucking thing is about. <laughs> it's like, what am I trying to say? It gives me, this is what I'm trying to say, you know? Yeah. Um, um and, and it changes, you know, a title, I'm not committed that that has to be the title. Like I said, sometimes it just lowers itself down and becomes a line and I need a new title. But if I don't know what I'm trying to say, I, how do I say it? It gives me, uh, you know, I've got, I've got something to aim for. There's the meaning is in the title. Yeah. I just, I don't hear, I've, I've heard, I just don't hear that very often. Um, and I, I mean, I would tend to, I would, that makes sense to me. And I'm surprised more people don't start with that. But I don't, I don't hear that as much. You probably as I, hear it more from Nashville writers. Yeah, I'd have to go back and see who says that. Um, yeah, um, I interviewed a few years ago the writer uh, Anthony Doerr. He won the Pulitzer Prize for the book All the Light We Cannot See. It came out a couple of years ago. Uh, it was a great, it's a great book. It's a World War II historical novel, and I think I asked him about writer's block. And he said something I'll never forget. He said, he doesn't believe in writer's block. He, think, he thinks writer's block is a failure of courage. In other words, it's the, it's, you know, hesitating, I think, to write through the garbage. He doesn't believe in it. Um, so I'm curious, what do you think about that? I mean, writer's block is that, and I, I thought songwriters also tell me like it's important to write. And I think Nils Lofgren told me this, write through the, you got to write through all the crap first to get to the good stuff. So I think, yeah, I think I'm with Nils. You've got yeah. to write the little songs. The little yeah. songs are rungs on the ladder that get you to the songs that you know have more substance. Yeah. And if you're not willing to write the little songs, I think that may present itself as block. Yeah. I don't yeah. present all the songs that I write. In you fact, don't I don't want... present most of the songs that I write. Yeah. Um, so do, do you think that you believe in writer's block or do you think it's, do you have moments where you just, nothing's happening? Well, I don't think about writer's block. I don't force myself to write if I'm not um, feeling it. Um, I can go a long time without writing but not get worried about it. I don't have a deal where the publisher's demanding that I write a song a week. I don't, I don't put that kind of pressure on myself. I just know every couple of years I need to have a record to keep my career going. So every <laughs> couple of years I put out a record. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure that some people honestly experience it. I, I don't put the pressure on myself to know that answer to that. I, I, so far since I've been doing this, every couple of years I've been managed to come up with ten songs, eleven songs that I feel um, are at the standard uh, that I demand of myself, and I'm willing to put them into the world on a record. It, yeah, and I, it, you know, what he, what he said. I think for me at least, I tell, I tell people writer's block isn't that you don't know what to say, it's because you don't know where to begin. And I think often people to me, they have something to say, but they think they have to start the process with the first thing. And maybe you don't start with the first thing, you start with the middle thing or the thing a third of the way down. Um, but I just, I, I find it hard to believe, I don't know if I've had many times where I'm staring at the page thinking, there's genuinely nothing coming to my mind but when I say to myself, just start writing, don't worry where that thing is, is going to end up in the final draft. To me, that makes it a lot easier. Um, and it reminds me a little bit of what Hemingway said one time when Hemingway said that he always finishes writing for the day when he knows he has something else to say. Because I read that too, so yeah, that he knows where to pick up tomorrow. Yeah, because yeah. he's terrified of starting the next day with nothing in the tank. And so he what always, a, and I think that would take such tremendous discipline to say, I know what I want to say. But do you do that? No. Oh. Not really. I'll say everything I got and then <laughs> wake up the next day and see what else is there. But, you know, because I'm a reader, I'm always refueling the tank. Uh, that's a great point. 
Yeah, that's a great point. I never thought of that, but I guess you, so you're always filled with language and ideas. I mean, do you get a lot of song ideas from, from the, from the books? You do? Oh yeah. I'll just lift shit right out of the book. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I think you, I think I'm, I know the answer to this, but are you a hard copy person or an ebook reader? Hard copies. You are. Oh yeah. See, this, this is, I, I'm, I'm sensing, see, to me, like I, uh, you know, I have no, even with, I mean, I spent, you know, years in the stacks of libraries doing research for my PhD, but I am, but I'm not wedded at all to the printed page. Um, I have, I, it's, you would think someone like me would, but I, there's no romance at all, romance at all attached to the feel and the smell and the touch. Um, I, just, I just love books. Yeah. Yeah. Like some people love vinyl, like I don't have vinyl. I'll you don't have vinyl. I can't figure you out. This is like, you know, computer, you, you won't use pen and paper, but you, but you, uh, you don't use, you don't have vinyl. Wow. Um, I go when I moved to Nashville, I kind of regret it. I do, but I know I wouldn't be listening to it right now. I, I, I wouldn't be, I, I yeah. listen to Spotify. <laughs> uh -oh. I'm, a, I'm a patron of Satan. <laughs> Um, it's easy, you know, I listen to it on my earbuds on the walk, I listen to it in my car, I listen to it on the computer. Um, vinyl, weirdly for me, and I know this is probably shooting myself in the foot to say it, but I used to like vinyl when I got high. I'd go <laughs> the joint, sit down on the couch, drop the needle and be high in the music, but I'm sober now, and I... I tend to move a lot faster than I did when I was stoned. And so it's a different, I connected vinyl with weed and the, I got, it got disconnected when I got sober. Right, 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 right. What are you reading right now? I don't know if you told, did, did I ask you that? Like at this very moment, do you have a book that you're reading? Yeah, yeah, I'm reading, uh, the, this gentleman wrote a book about the pilgrimage on the- um, Oh, Camino. that's, okay. You know, yeah. something in, 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 in Spain, it's a long walk that hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of pilgrims do uh, at a time. And you stay and in, we, in sort of youth hostels and community meals and um, the feet get blister and there's a lot of suffering involved, but self-reflection. I'm loving this book because of the motion and the journey while I'm stranded at home. Yeah, what's it called? Way is made by walking. Oh, okay, great, excellent. Author um, Paul Bors. He's a, a minister as well. Okay, and so are you? Christ, it's a Christian pilgrimage, um, and um, you know that's not my deal at all. But I love the word sojourner, and I love the word pilgrim, and I love the wayfaring stranger archetype. And he's speaking to that in me. Or as you're reading the center, you're thinking, ah, that I need. There's a song. There are song ideas in here as you're reading this. It feels like it in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's the exact opposite of what we're all experiencing right now. So right, exactly. It does the magic that books do, which is bring you to another reality. Absolutely.